What is going on everybody? John Ramdeen and Robin Black getting stoked about some of the cool fights on the horizon. Uh, this is kind of an old I thought you were going to say getting stoned. We're not getting stoned. We're not, we're, I mean, one certainly, beer. Certainly not. I don't know. You got a Joe, Joe Rogan mug, so okay. who knows yeah, all right. what's inside uh, of that right, 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 right Fair now. enough. Fair but enough. we got to talk about this cool fight. Old school Diego Sanchez trying to keep up with the times, taking on the returning Raging Al. I guess he didn't sell a bunch of houses. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you gotta go dark right away. Like may, maybe the guy made so much money. You're right. Maybe the guy made so much money that he's like, I just wanna go back to doing what I love. Yeah, that's just, it. That, that is exactly yeah, what he's it rich. is. He's rich. Now he's a raging alcoholic, <laughs> which is where he gets his name. He's also wealthy which is dangerous when people, you don't want to give these guys too much money. You were just in Albuquerque. You had a chance to hang out with some of the luminaries mm -hmm. of, of combat sports. Diego Sanchez was there, of course, getting ready. We know um, Raging Al has his alliance with the former middleweight champion, Chris Weidman, who takes on Gegard and Mousasi yeah. this weekend in Buffalo. If you're Buffalo. watching this after, yeah. who knows what happened. Yeah, exactly, right. I, I, think I guess Musasi. I'm supposed to think about those things. I think Musasi, Musasi, jeez, I don't know. I, I mean, know. we cheer for Chris. Often. I cheer for both guys. That's a thing. When this you, is part of the problem. Yeah, sometimes. part of the problem. But when you think about Ally Quinta and you think about Diego Sanchez, we'll think about that fight in one second. Mm -hmm. You were in Albuquerque. Yeah. What are some of the takeaways just by being around, you know, this house of excellence? Oh, yeah. Uh, it, I mean... Uh, so I was there to do the deep dive study on Cub Swanson, which, of course, is something that's really special to me as somebody who, you know, studies him and his work so deeply. But uh, Brandon Gibson, you, I got a lot of insight into the level of coaching. I've spoken to Greg Jackson, done some really interesting conversations with him. Uh, but Brandon's a very smart guy. That's Cowboys guy. Yeah. Main guy. And uh, he was working with Cobb on some stuff I did for Monster Zim uh, out of Korea. Um, He's a very talented coach. You can see the level these guys are at and they're pushing each other, you know? Uh, Gibson actually broke his shin in half in training once and uh -huh. then became a coach. So uh, Greg uh, pushed him towards that and he loves it and he's great. they love him. Uh, so obviously Cobb is operating on a level three weeks out from a fight that is pretty spectacular and uh, Diego who I'm an enormous fan of I did a breakdown about his gameness because when you think about that that nature that game fighting nature mm -hmm. you think about of Diego course. Sanchez it's who he is it's at the root of him um, then I watched and so I got a great interview with him which was fun and crazy it'll be up at monsterzim.com and we'll try to make sure to share it um, but uh, and he's a lunatic lunatic <laughs> like Lunatic, like he didn't, you know, what you see that with it, and you, you don't have to look too far on Fight Pass to just Google, yes, Diego Sanchez. And that's just real. That's who he is. And so he had duct taped some type of helmet contraption that which was pushing up his head and putting pressure on his jaw. And he's sitting there with this duct tape thing on, doing the split. Like when you say duct tape, was it literally red, home homemade? Red, yes, red <laughs> duct tape, like pressed in places that only he understands his purpose. And then he was doing the splits shirtless on top of a, a grappling dummy and then kind of fighting it, but in the splits with this thing on. And then he went and everybody was doing their normal class. And then he went over to some machine. I don't know if I will be out of sight here, I guess, but he's kind of balancing on some kind of weird machine counting one, <laughs> two, like, and like, to 20 and then takes a break to go over and do something on the thing again with this weird helmet on and then again one two like with some kind of so I go over in the middle and he is hyper focused obviously so I go over in the middle and I'm like Diego what is that machine and it's just some soldered together thing with some and he goes oh he would take me as he's running over to do another thing it would take me hours to explain that machine to you um yeah, it's a custom machine. I paid $2,700 for it. And I'm looking and it's just metal and texture. And there's a website and I took the picture and I thought, I'll Google this. And then I thought, nah, <laughs> it's just a crazy contraption, right? But it's this. Done for balance? Like what? Yeah, and, and stabilizing development of some kind okay. and yelling really loud with that thing on your head. But... Ultimately, this is who he is. He thinks differently. He tries things differently. He trains himself differently. And as a result, he fights differently. And it's authentic. It's real. 
That's why he, we love to watch him fight. That's why it's developed this nature in him. He cannot be broken, obviously. Uh, then he kind of cut a promo in the interview about how being knocked out made him free, that now he can fight. And there's something logically, psychologically to that. The fact that the worst happened. He woke up the next day and the sun came up. I think you told me a, a story about Sean yeah. Tompkins saying something yeah. like that to you before about uh, what's the worst thing yeah. that can happen in that. So you get knocked out. Yeah. And then you, you, you once that, that you can understand that or allow that to penetrate, I guess you can be free. Yeah, uh, you know, when, when Nate Diaz ta has talked about accepting the worst, and no, and embracing that that is a possibility, so that you can let it go. And no, people don't think of Nate Diaz as you know. Cerebral. Yeah, but there's something in their ad adaptive nature, the Diaz brothers, that has built strength in them, survival strength. And D and Diego is like that. And I'm imitating him, and I'm exaggerating. Actually, I'm not exaggerating the headgear. That's what it looked like. It was red duct tape stuck on a thing. Uh, as he did the split shirtless on top of a dummy while everybody was training in the normal way. Like, it was wild. If, if you're Ray Longo and you're Matt Sarah and you're the guys that uh, Iaquinta surrounds himself with, what is the assignment for Diego Sanchez? What are you doing to make sure that you, A, you know he's coming forward. You mm -hmm. know, like, that's what's happening no matter mm -hmm. what. Even if he tries to be patient, Diego is going to always do what Diego does, and that's try to kill you. Yeah. So based on some of those things that we know about Sanchez, and of course, as a, as a martial artist, they grow, they can change. But what is the, the assignment, number one, the first assignment A, if you're ally of Quintana's team? I think they'll believe, and they may or may not be correct, that they can win in all these situations if they keep it intelligent and if they keep it calculating and they keep and it technical. That, but the way to beat crazy is with technical and sometimes the way to beat technical is crazy Be, uh, technical works best in the context where everything is understood uh, Diego Sanchez is very hard to understand because he doesn't know exactly what he's doing or why it's visceral and it's real is it isn't just oh man this guy has an iron jaw or you know he's got a lot of heart or gameness or whatever but there's, that's all things yeah, those are all, all things compounded yeah those are all real but there's something in the way that he expresses himself chaotically when you watch him train or you hang out with him and I admire Diego Sanchez and everybody I asked around about him I'm like, does he train like this all the time? And they're like, oh yeah, I've been, that's here. Just Diego. I've been here for 10 years, that's just Diego. And it is him, that's him. Th that's that him. must have been a crazy ride when you think about, you know, he's undefeated, king of the cage champion. You go on to this reality show that who knows what it's gonna do. You, you win this reality show, you become this big mixed martial arts superstar. You have all the ups and downs of this crazy career. Twenty. I'm sure when Diego Sanchez, well, I know this for a fact, when Diego Sanchez was growing up, the idea of being a mixed martial arts champion or a prize fighter as a mixed martial artist, it didn't exist. Yeah. So yeah. The, the fact that he was born and he's grown in this crazy game, can he still be capable of learning and doing against some of the modern yeah. type games that are out there? And that's the thing is like, if you are... If they are progressing in a different way, if Ally Aquinta really is sharper on the feet and can counter him and trap him and, and penalize him for big wide swings, if Diego does indeed do that, if Al can out wrestle him and be on top, but those are a lot of ifs. Uh, but even if he can, you know, there's something about the nature of these guys, and there's more than a few of them. Greg Jackson said people don't necessarily understand them at all. We were talking, Mullins and I were talking about it the other day. Um, people People have think they know something about Greg Jackson's, but you think of Lando, you think of Cub, you think of Carlos Kurt, Condit, John Jones, you think of Hall. John Jones, you think of Dodson. These are the most creative yeah. guys going, you know. Then you add Diego. That's the environment they're in. So, so that is a challenge. That is a challenge for sure. Um, but also, 
while I was in Albuquerque, I was sitting in a conversation with Cub and, and Carlos Condit as they were one-upping each other about their early careers as Cub fought for $100 in a bar wow. in Tijuana that was in the bottom. I was like, people were up the side screaming with mo money in their fists. And then Carlos upped it by saying that his first fight was in a cockfighting pit, a cockfighting ring as after they had some roosters. This is battle. real, you know. This, this is, is real. real. Yeah. And Diego comes from that world. Yeah. So uh, Ally Aquinta, what you hope to do is say, your, that time has passed, make all that stuff irrelevant. You try to make that irrelevant with smart fighting. Or you say to yourself, what am I doing here? I'm here to fight, I'm here because yeah. I find some joy in this. And so if you're Ally Aquinta, you're like, I believe I'm sharper and I'm better, I believe my skills are better, but I also think I'm tougher, so let's fucking go. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I Aquinta is capable of that. Uh, this is, I love this fight. We've got, you know, we, we'll be talking about a number of fights, but but this one, there's something very special going on here. Ally Aquinta is a very underappreciated fighter, and we don't know how much improvement he's made and how different he is than what we saw. There's something very unique about Ally Aquinta as well. And then you bring them both together and you get this fight. Tremendous battle at 155 pounds. Diego Sanchez takes on Raging Al, Al Ayaquinta.